Khadija, aka the music, you know, Matt and I'm back again for another girl. Okay, I think this is episode six or seven, I'm not sure which you'll see it in the title. Um, like always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let's get started. So, I wanted to touch on three things. Okay, firstly, rest in peace, Tina Turner. Okay, your bravada, okay, your candor, your courage lives on, and it's forever felt. and I am so happy to have lived to be able to listen to your music and learn about your story. And I'm just so, so, so proud of you and wish you all the best and to rest in peace. And in saying that, I have to bring in the other person. It really pains me and it sickens me how this phrase has become mainstream and people use it willy nilly and not having any empathy to what Tina Turner experienced. And the fact that Beyonce allowed Jay-Z to use that phrase in Drunken, I think it's Drunken Love, really pissed me off because I'm like, Beyonce has always said that Tina, Tone, Tina, Tone, Tina Turner was her idol, right? And let's be for real, the blueprint of Beyonce comes from Tina Turner, point blank period. If y'all didn't know that, please go read up about it, okay? But Beyonce's blueprint is Tina Turner. And so allow your dude to say, eat that cake anime in your song and not think, yo, uh, maybe this is in poor taste. Not to, not to think that mm, th this is making fun of, making light of something so serious, something that she went through that really changed her life and experience that was negative that you know she pushed through and came on top and became a phenomenal sensation to use that joke to use that line in your in that song it sickened me and i've always sided side eyed beyonce for allowing jay-z to use that in the song and I, it just makes me sick and you see that in mainstream how people make that joke of like yeah i'm ike um that's my i'm ike and tina eat that cake anime like you you see that all the time people making fun of that but you're making fun of domestic violence you're making fun of rape you're making fun of manipulation terror etc that this woman went through and if you guys have not seen what's love got to do with it please do check it out or read the book um but tina literally overcame so much okay as a black woman coming from being a poor girl that no one wanted to later becoming famous and loved and beloved so her story is just beautiful and i'm happy that she, the latter powerful life apart from the cancer um f for the most part from what we know or don't know has been more more so happiness rather than the formative years and the things that she experienced and I will say, yo, ever since watching <laughs> What's Love Got To Do With It, yo, Lawrence Fishburne, I have not liked. The only way he like moved up a little bit on my list was in um, The Matrix, but I did not like Lawrence Fishburne for, ever since watching that movie because it just tri he triggered me and I, I just couldn't, I couldn't. But again, um, Tina Turner was the first, a trailblazer in so many respects, okay? First woman in rock and, rock and roll. Um, she was in that of rock and roll. Uh, Rolling Stones. I think she was the first woman, period, okay? She has had so many firsts. And it's just remarkable to see how many lives she's touched, how many women are influenced by her. Okay, by her bravada when you see her on stage. Okay, when you see her moving and dancing. Okay, and also to think about to think about how, especially nowadays, when you think about people being in the industry of music and even in acting, etc. People prefer to have women, especially when it's women. They need to be young. But Tina Turner, from when she was with Ike, Ike and Tina, and even when she was with Ike in the group, he was jealous of her. And that was part of the reason he was so brutal towards her. He was jealous because people came really to see her. She's a performer. And that's part of the reason he resented her and wanted her to suffer. Okay? But with 
through it all. She went through all of that. She came out of that saying, you know what? You can keep everything. You think you want to control me? You want to kill me, I Do it. But I'm going to walk on that stage, okay? But anyways, even going through all of that, she kept her name. And in her 40s, she built a name for herself again by herself on her own terms. And this woman is still was still performing in her later years. Do you know how remarkable that is? I hope Beyonce will have that same experience and she gets older that you're in your 60s, 70s performing. And I hope that now knowing that she's passed away, you allowing your partner to utilize that phrase and that song, I hope you recognize how wrong that was and how disgusting and despicable that was, okay? So I just, I really wanted to touch on that because ever since that song came out, people making fun of that, it just really rubbed me the wrong way. And I'm just like, Beyonce, you knew better. And especially for this being your idol, this being your mentor, you knew better and you should have done better by her and not allowed your man to use that phrase in your song. But now moving on to Gabrielle Union and 50-50. Let me just say, yo, in my previous um, girl, I talked about Evan, Evelyn. I talked about Ebony K. Williams and what she wants in her partner, right? And I did mention, if I didn't mention in the video, I'm pretty sure I mentioned the title that she is elitist. Ebony is elitist. She is. And in saying that, I was, I forgot to mention this book in the, um, in that video, but this was a book that, oh, there we go. You guys see it? So this was a book. It's called Me Girl Land by Margaret Jefferson. This was gifted to me um, for my birthday by my brother a few years ago. I started reading it finally. <laughs> I'm here and this literally talks about elitism and black culture right in the US specifically so I would I think this is a good read you guys should check it out but in talking about this right so we I already spoke on Ebony ha wanting to she has expectations and standards in her partner and she has the right to have those expectations it doesn't take away from the fact that she is elitist and some of us are I could say in some ways I am elitist right there's certain jobs that I won't do because I'm like I did not go to school for as long as I went to school I did not do the things I've done in my life to be doing certain jobs and it's not that I'm looking down on people that do those jobs but for me myself I wouldn't do it personally and I hope one day I won't have to eat my words but hey that could happen and if it happens I'm gonna do what I gotta do to survive but in saying that right when it comes to Gabrielle Union and this 50-50 idea me personally when you're in a partnership Y'all can look at it as being in a roommate situation if you want to look at it that. But if you're talking about like the institution of marriage, right? Marriage is a business contract, okay? This is a business that you're going into with a partner. So you're going to have a business partner, right? Where you guys are making decisions together to make sure your business is going to be fulfilling. It's going to, there's going to be peaks and valleys, right in your business but ultimately because you're working together to sustain it you're going to achieve the things that you plan on achieving okay if you don't want to consider if you want to believe that marriage is something about true love etc that is something that's very recent the idea of marriage institution of marriage was about ownership and property about literally giving women away to gain things or to um, solidify unions. That's all it's always been. It's not until recent, and I would say in the last six, 60, less than 100 years, less than 100 years for certain, is now where it's been changed to be something about love and true love. It's never been that, okay? Even the idea of like the, um, the rings about like, oh, proposing, those are things that were pushed by marketers to get people to buy into this fictitious belief of marriage being about true love. It's always been a business situation, right? So for me personally, I don't believe in the institution of marriage, considering the history behind it and utilizing women as property, okay? Me personally, I don't believe in that. It's something I will never do. However, for those that do believe in hypergamy, which is marrying basically rich so you can have a life of you know, leisure, luxury, etc. 
if you believe in that like there are these black femininity um pages that talk about that if that's what you believe and that's what you want i wish you well and i hope you find the partner that you know is out there for you that's gonna give you that right but let's also be for real that when we look at black history in the u.s black women because of the history of slavery, segregation, Jim Crow, all of that in the U.S., Black women have never had the opportunity to have marriages where they're being taken care of. And they, they've always worked. Black men as well. It's not saying that they haven't. But for the most part, unless you're talking about elitist groups of people who have that, right? Most Black people did not have that where you could work. Or you could just be leisure at home, be a stay-at-home um, wife, and your man's doing all of that. Some did, but that was not the majority, right? Because of the history of slavery, etc., right? So this idea of people nowadays striving to have a marriage where you're taken care of by a man, for me, makes no sense. It makes no sense because if we look at the period when this was popularized or when this was normalized, you were in a period where women didn't have rights. You didn't have rights. You had to have a man permission to open an account. It wasn't until, what, the 70s, 60s, 70s, where women finally started getting rights as far as like opening um, bank accounts, as far as being able to say that your partner raped you if they did rape you, being able to fight it, you know, fight against your partner and like divorce and settlements etc cetera, etc cetera. it's not until very recent that women have had certain rights but prior to this period that so many people want to go back to of like let me have a partner that's going to take care of me and i'll, I'll be good etc it makes no sense why would you want to go to a period where women didn't have any rights why would you want that why is that an ideal because for me if you are looking for a situation like that right then that means if you're looking for this and traditional you want tradition okay so that means your man is controlling the money and if we're talking about like a heteronormative situation right your man is controlling the money he's making the decisions and you're just going to be here doing what you got to do because you have no voice you have no choice in the way things are going to be run because that's what it is so this ideal of like wanting that but no you really don't want that you want the man to provide so you can use his money to do whatever you want to do but at the same time you still want to have your rights to be able to do what you want to do you know maybe make money if you want to make money or not um travel do whatever you want without having to ask for money from your partner but if we're looking at what these traditional relationships were that's what the situation was so if gabrielle union is saying in her partnership she has a 50 50 split let's be clear she is wealthy. Her man is wealthy. Okay. He's a lot richer than she is. That's true. But if we're talking about fairness in their, in their relationship, right? This is something that they've chosen to do. If they're both coming from a space of, let's say he makes a hundred million a year and she has 25 million, they're still rich, right? So if they were to buy a home, if they're to like bring in the expenses that they have normally, that money is not going to be that much of a difference to them because of the amount of money that they make already, right? Now, if this was normal people, let's say your partner is making 100000 a year and you're making 25000 a year, that is going to make a huge imbalance because it's not going to be fair. But this is where, for me personally, equity comes into, this, into the equation. Equity is saying that because I'm making significantly lower and you're making significantly higher, what is equitable is that the ratio of what you're paying and the ratio of what I'm paying, it's gonna be relative to what we're making, right? So I'm, if the house cost um, 100K, let's just say, right? I'm putting in 25, you're putting in 75 because you're also making significantly more than me and that makes it fair, right? I'm basically trying to say that we're in a society where there is inequities, and to make things fair, we need to make adjustments, right? If I'm noticing when it comes to the, po the political field, we know that for the most part, it's white men, older white men that are in power. You see more older white men in Congress and you see other people. Now, if we're going to say we want to make this equitable, we're going to say we're going to keep, we're going to put a cap now at the amount of old or uh, white men that can apply for these positions. And we're going to get more opportunities. So these other groups who have not had the opportunities, that is making something equitable, right? We can say what is fair is we, we all can um, run for this office. 
isn't really fair considering the history. But now if we're saying we're going to make it equitable where you're running, but we're going to give more opportunities to these people, that is actual equi equitability, right? That's what's making things fair. So in Gabrielle's situation, maybe they don't agree with having equity as far as like when it comes to finances right but for them it's fairness because they both earn a lot of money so it works for them so for the women that have been coming at her like oh my god bitch he cheated on you and you're you're um an, a, a salad eater or a grocery eater whatever the phrase is and all these these things coming at her basically looking down on her for deciding what works best for her situation Bitch, that works for her and her partner, and he's okay with it. And just like she said, trust, okay? If I wanted that, he would. However, I don't want that because that's not my ministry. I'm not about here having my man taking care of everything because that doesn't work for me. I want to make sure that when we're in our relationship, we have equality, okay? I'm not looking at you as... um someone I just am going to take from and you're not looking at me in that way either that's why we have a partnership it's not something where me as a grown ass woman is depending on another adult to take care of me we're not doing that so this conversation and it's been a lot of black women that have been coming at her is it sickens me because I'm just like girl what do you even have a partner that is that is um beneficial in your life where you're both helping and helping each other and working toward whatever your goals and missions are in life or is the person that you have in your life someone that's taking from you and that's not adding to your life and it, again if for you hypergamy is what works and that's what you're striving for by all means go for it girl do what you got to do but please don't be looking down on other people because they decided to do something different okay so yeah those are really my thoughts i wanted to get this out before i head off to my trip um and again rest in peace to tina turner oh like when i found out like i literally started playing her music i don't think i'm gonna watch what's love got to do it because it's just, it triggers me and it's just a little too much um for me um beyonce i hope you're going to pay homage to her in your concert and i'm sure in whatever the grammys or whatever that's going to like a, do a lifetime achievement award i'm sure beyonce is going to perform in it but I, I hope you will also take the stand in saying I regret and I apologize um, for allowing my partner to use that line in our song. And lastly, with regards to Gabrielle Union, girl, bravo, do you, okay? And live a happy life with your partner, okay? You ain't doing nothing wrong and a lot of people need to learn, okay, to not depend on others to like achieve things in life like have a partner you have a true partnership where you guys are building each other okay not just someone taking okay but anyways those are my thoughts for today thank y'all so much for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe your girl will be back soon for a new video peace out we do and hugs